Hey y'all, I'm Lily O'Reilly. This is Lily O'Reilly Reviews, and this is my new Vermicom poster. So, let's get to it, huh? Okay, so this big contraption is a Vermicom poster. Why did I upgrade from my little green one? Surface area. A small composter like that one, I've come to realize, cannot support a two or three person household in terms of eating the amount of vegetable waste I produce while cooking. So I have been um, pureeing it and freezing it and thinking that eventually the worms would be voracious enough to eat it, but the problem is the worms are limited because I use red wigglers, which are pretty standard. They live in the top, you know, four inches. They are constrained or limited by the size of what you put them in. So moving to this gives me a much larger size to work with. Now what is this? This is a collaboration between myself and one of my roommates. Thank God I live with a fabricator. Basically what they did is they knocked up a framework to support this, which was... I think it was a water trough, it might have been a pond. I know we had it as a water feature at the last place. And we cut the bottom out. So all it really is is a rigid plastic framework. Behind here, what we did was we lined that trough with plastic bags and then proceeded to spray foam behind here to insulate the worms. So that way over the winter, the worms will stay warm enough. This is an enclosed gazebo, which is why I'm echoey, I'm sorry. And I'm hoping that the insulation plus the size will be sufficient to keep them warm. So let me get this peeled out and then I'll show you what's in here. It's been two or three days since we did this. There are some places in here where the spray foam still hasn't fully sealed due to the fact that it was airtight. It slows the curing process down, but I will bring you over and let you see it. Okay, so as you can see, this is all hardened spray foam. It's not the cleanest application, but the point here is literally just to provide a little extra insulation around the edges. There are aluminum rods on the bottom spaced roughly an inch apart. I believe the rods are half inch. Okay, but like Lily, why does your composter not have a bottom? So this is what's called a flow through verma composter. What that means is that air is allowed to flow completely through to help oxygenate the substrate, prevent funk, prevent any kind of negative reactions in there, and it's supposed to help with better worm populations. So what you do is when I put this in, I'm going to pack, and I'm doing all of this purely theory. I've never tried this, so this is going to be really cool. The base layer is going to be a cardboard. And that is to create a firm basis on which the worms can produce casings or poo. So that over time, by the time that cardboard degrades, the casings will have compacted down to a point where they should not fall through the bars. Now, when we want to get compost out, the benefit of this method is in the old one, you had to lift off the top tray, pull out the second tray, root through it, dig out the compost, the casings, and try not to hurt any worms. Here, because the worms live in the top layer, there shouldn't be any worms at the bottom, and I can take like a garden trowel, something with tines, and scrape the bottom to get the compost to fall through. Now, I'm not particularly worried about this because I am primarily interested not in the creation of compost casings, I'm way more interested in having something that will eat all of my damn vegetables so I don't have to throw them into the woods and attract predators or 
you know, throw them away, which I hate more. So I'm going to go through and I'm going to take my little X-Acto knife and I'm going to trim up all of this sprayer foam, clean it out from between the bars, and then I will put the tank back in and I will come back to you and we can talk about things like putting the cardboard in the bottom. So, cool? Cool. Okay, so that took about an hour, but I have put the tub back inside the composter and I've screwed it down so it's sturdy. It has a wobble, I'm gonna shim it in a bit. And, I had an enormous pile of cardboard boxes that I went through, I took off all the tape, and I cut them up into chunks. So what we're gonna do now is I'm going to layer cardboard into the bottom of this until I run out of cardboard in an attempt to build a firm base layer to prevent the compost ca castings, to prevent the castings from falling through. So I'm gonna move this over there, put the camera in it, and we're gonna watch. Cool. <clears throat> okay, so as you can see, I've reinstalled the tub. Down here are half inch aluminum bars spaced roughly an inch apart. They're secured through pieces of wood on either side. We just drilled holes and put them through. I'll show the close-ups of the structure at the end. So now what I'm gonna do for setup is due to the fact that there are gaps, I'm going to put down a fairly thin, maybe an inch layer of cardboard at the bottom to help give everything time to compact before it reaches a point where it would be able to fall through. So let's do that. So there we have a fairly decent, reasonably solid layer at the bottom that will hopefully keep the worms from attempting to make a break that direction. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring out my existing Burma composter. I'm going to first put in the lower tray, which should not have worms, and I'm going to mix it with paper to give it a nice, thick, lower substrate. And then I will put in the top bin, which does have worms, which will hopefully get us to about the mid-range level. So yeah, let's do that. Okay, so while I was in the house, I discovered an entire pile of paper, just like brown butcher's paper, that I'm going to go ahead and put in as a bottom layer to just help plug any holes that might be occurring, just as an additional safeguard. Now as this gets moistened, it should flatten down. So now we're ready to add in the compost. Okay, so in here is tray one, which should have all the worms. Tray two, which should be primarily older castings. I'm going to pull tray one off and set it off to one side on top of a piece of cardboard. And as you can see, this is in fact where the worms do live. Detaching it from tray two, you can see that there's not the clean split that would be expected. So, I'm going to very, very, very carefully figure out how to set this down in a way that hopefully won't hurt the worms. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take out all of this, which is castings and worms, and just start packing it into here. There's so much of it, get to the floor. Now what you're seeing at the bottom here is what was the 
supposed to be the worm divider, the thing that kept the worms from getting down into the wet section. As you may be able to tell, it didn't really work. And I'm not saying that this was a bad vermicomposter, I'm just saying that there were some design flaws. So, I'm just cleaning all of the poo casings off of both sides. Okay. Now we're gonna carefully remove the poo casings from the bottom here because I don't want to hurt any of the worms that are sticking through. So I'm trying to very gently get everything to release, which is a little hit or miss at this point. Oh, and you're little. Because oh, there's still so much of it stuck around the sides. There's just so many worms in here. And you can see a lot of the leftover food that didn't get quite digested. There's lots of eggshells and such mixed up in this. All right. Gently coerce more worms off the bottom. Come on, guys. I don't want to hurt you. You're making this hard. More scraping, more worms, very gentle compaction. This is all fine. I will be watering this, of course, once I get the worms in here, because I know that I'm putting them on top of dry cardboard and dry paper, and worms do need a certain amount of humidity to survive. So I will be making an effort to make this a more hospitable worm environment. Once I finish peeling them all out of the grate at the bottom. Literally all I'm doing is just running my hand down the grate to try to remove the worms. Alright, I have gotten as many worms as I can get on a casual attempt. I'm just running my hands around the edges to catch any stragglers. I'm gonna call it good enough. Set that off to one side. Now this was the very bottom of the original composter, which is where the leachate, the liquid, collected. Worms also weren't supposed to be in there, but I don't think they got the memo. Now normally I would not pour the leachate directly into a new tank, but like I said, dry compost, dry paper. I'm trying to get a little wetter for them. So now I'm going to stack all of this stuff up over here. And now we reintroduce all the worms that are currently living in the top tier. And you can tell that they've been busy because the whole top is poo. There is a thick coconut fiber blanket that I put in there that they have completely shredded. No respect for the nice things I give them, I tell you. And then underneath, this is the more active layer where there is newspaper, there's paper towels, because if I used a paper towel for something around the house that wasn't important, I would generally just toss it in here instead of throwing it away if there weren't chemicals on it. There's shredded paper, there's, there's everything. And this is all going to get dumped out as well, just like that. I've gone about a week without feeding these guys, so that A, when I put them in, they'll be hungry, and B, so that there would not be as much mess to potentially get put into the under layers. So now I'm just trying to gently coerce them into getting the hell out. Come on guys, go. Go, I'm a bird, I'm going to eat you, get gone. 
my worms lack self-preservation. And the problem is I'm so attached to them that I don't want anything to happen to them that I do things like this where I try to gently coerce them out. But as you can see, I am at no shortage of worms. So I'm gently side scraping again, just trying to remove the worms. Don't want to hurt them, just want them to go. And we've got an amazing crop of worms in here, quite a few more than I would have guessed. And it doesn't smell bad, it smells composty, but in an earthy way, not in like an ooh that's gross kind of way. So one of the cool things about red wigglers is that in the quote-unquote wild, they actually live in colonies. So living right on top of one another like this isn't stressful for them the way that it might be for another critter. It's like every time I flip it over, there's another couple worms that I didn't spot the first time. But this absolutely becomes diminishing returns at some point, and it kind of just turns into look. At what point is it no longer worth it to try to rescue a couple of worms out of this giant seething mass of worms? And the answer for me, of course, is well, when I've gotten them all. So, I'm now effectively clear of worms. The only thing left to do is flip the lid, because for some reason they like to hide under the lid, which I will never understand. Oh cool, not that many and rescue the handful of weirdos that are up there. All clear. Give the lid itself a gentle rub down to get the worms off. This was supposed to be an interior guard to keep worms out of the lid. As you can guess, it didn't work. Cool. So now I have a tub full of paper, worms, cardboard, etc. I'm going to layer on top a massive amount of shredded paper and then I'm going to soak it all down with water. So as I might have mentioned, I have a large bag of shredded paper that I use for substrate. I'm putting this on top to let them feel safe and so that they can't see the light. Now, I get to water it which is gonna be fun. And that is essentially the vermicomposter. I'll come out here, dig down to where the worms are, and put food in about once a week. So let me go water them. What are you getting into, bud? Now I'm hoping that it won't take a full gallon, but for things like this, I would always rather be a little too moist than a little too dry. So, and as I've mentioned before, this is office paper. It has pieces of plastic in it. I was very, very worried about it the first time I put it in, but I've come to realize that the worms just eat around it. And then as I'm working in my vermicomposter, whenever I notice, down you go, a piece of plastic, I just go ahead and pull it out 
and it's way less stress than trying to sort through the paper to find it. All right, that was about a third of a gallon. So, I'm just trying to get all of the paper nice and wet. There's no worms up this high yet, so there's no real worry about bothering anything. I'm just getting that top moisture holding layer prepared. So overall, I put about a half gallon of water in here. It's enough to make the paper nicely wet, but it's not like soggy, soggy. I'm not able to get water out when I squish it. So it's about the consistency of like what you want a beauty blender to be before you use it. So this is important because now we've provided them with a nice moist area to live in. And I will, once I've got this fluffed to my satisfaction, put a couple pieces of cardboard on top to act as an additional moisture and light barrier so that they feel safe coming up into the paper to eat. So, yeah, that works for me. A nice thick layer of wetted down paper shreds, all of the old vermicompost, a nice layer of paper and cardboard at the bottom, and I'm going to call it good to go.